Hello, I'm so excited to be talking today with Meg Barnhart and Jane McKay <laughs> of the Zen of Slow Cooking. These two amazing women have started a company that sells packets of spice blends and there are spice blends designed for different meals and different recipes. Hopefully they'll show us a few and give us a sense of that because it's really, really brilliant. I've just got their sample package in the mail and I've already started working with these spices. It's so beautiful because you can cook anything and add these spices in in the beginning or add them in in the end and it just brings so much flavor to your food. So I wanted to talk to them today about why they started this company and have them tell us a little bit more about spices and why spices matter from their point of view. So who would like to start? I'd love to hear the story of how this company came into being. Yeah, uh, I'll start. And thank you so much for having us today. We're very excited about this. Um, so the, the business really started with my roots. I, I grew up in a home where my mom cooked every day after school. Um, and I, I would come home to these delicious, we had really gorgeous family dinners. And so when I was a young mom, I sort of thought that's what I would be doing. And then and then realized that I really wasn't actually in my home at four o'clock to cook every day, <laughs> right? So mm -hmm. I, I struggled with that. Um, so that very much was a big part of the Zen story. Um, I, um, you know, called my best friend one night crying. I said, I'm like a total failure. I can't even get food on the table. And she said, stop crying, not a failure. She said, um, get off the phone, you're way too accessible. I was doing a lot of um, advocacy work at the time. And she said, go buy a crock pot. And I said, I have no idea what you're talking about, but I did exactly what, you know, you do what your best friend tells you to do. So I bought one and I, I kind of fell in love with the cooking technology because I could see that it, um, I could prepare food in a time that fit my schedule. And then the house filled up with a room. I could take the kids out to open lands every afternoon and walk. They were little. So it was really great um, device. And then my daughter started crying two years into it saying she couldn't eat any more thick meat. Because I only knew how to make like four things in it, um, you know. This is way before there were blogs or you know anything, you know. So I, um, I thought, you know, I love the technology. I understood the science behind it, and so I went and picked out my favorite cookbook, Silver Palette, and one of my favorite recipes, Chicken Marbella, and I started playing around and the food got really good. So very much part of our business is that. The second part I'll, I'll leap to, and then I'm gonna, um, I'll turn it over to Jane, but the second part of the, the business, uh, the genesis, and I used it, I used my, uh, I should say my slow cooker to meditate every day. I chop my vegetables in silence, 20 minutes, I had a 20 minute prep time. I put a mantra mm -hmm. over the slow cooker, I blessed it. I made the whole thing. Mm -hmm. uh, so the second part of the story though, was my middle son didn't have functional language till he was four. And as he got older, um, I wanted to figure out um, you know, I wasn't sure what, what kind of work he could do. And so I was sitting with a friend one day and I was saying, I, you know, I know this is what I meant to do with my life is to do something for this child. And I said, and she said, I said, but I want to have fun doing it. And she said, what are you having fun with? And I laughed. I said, my slow cooker. And I told her my whole meditation. She said, I have no idea what you're talking about, but do that. Um, and so I went back and I bought like any entrepreneur, about 30 domain names on GoDaddy. <laughs> um, asana of slow cooking, the yoga of slow cooking, and the Zen of slow cooking. And my friend said, "No one under, no one's going to understand the other ones. Go with Zen." So that's where the idea came from. Um, so that's the beginning of the business. I yeah. love that, Meg. That's yeah. a beautiful description. And open lands, at least from what I remember, is the only virgin prairie left in the Midwest. And yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. It's, it's we've been very involved with open lands. We're really involved in that. The, um, the conservation. Uh, I think it's the largest land trust. It's a huge land trust. Yeah, it's beautiful. So, so beautiful. Nice little plug for that open lands. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. And I love that while your food is, was, is cooking, you're out for a walk in the open lands, because that's the other thing that I love about spices is how much it connects us to nature. I mean, a lot of people, I think, just see their powdered spices. They don't really know where they come from, how they grow, what they'd look like when they're growing. Do you, do you, do you talk about that in your work? How do you we, source yeah. your spices? Yeah, absolutely. Well, we source them through a really good purveyor that's been in the market for 30 years. They have a ton of experience in sourcing them from really good, um, you know, good producers and suppliers, and they have the, the relationship. So I think that's really important. And that was one of our key foundations when we when we decided that spices and blending was the really a, the great way to connect with people with the flavor foundation for their food. And so, yeah, we absolutely are connected with 
purveying you know the best possible ingredients and you know specifically just one example our saffron comes from roomy spice um i actually have some with me here i mean i'm sure you know what saffron looks like but i'll just show you this is this is almost well it's more valuable than gold as i'm sure you know but it's just i'll just show you a little bit here it's just so beautiful this orange red color and it comes from a company called roomy spice in chicago founded by two vets so another chicago connection oh, and they came back from um afghanistan and their version to sort of move away from uh, their careers was in the army was to bring oh, no. saffron to uh to chicago and you know cultivate peace you know that's a nice connection so that's just one of our ingredients but yeah it's really important to us and we still that's work a, i love that story jane they were yeah. actually active duty in yeah. afghanistan yeah two, tours of afghanistan, two women yeah out of west point and then when they when they finally came back this is the the business they they kicked off so yeah we partnered with them since our very first blend and i'm sure we'll talk about that later but yeah well that's one of the things that's so beautiful is sourcing your spices and the relationships that you would build that way but i hadn't realized that you had such a beautiful relationship with these vets bringing saffron from afghanistan what a yeah. story and they actually pay the women um it's and it's roomy you know another spirit based in another spiritual practice as well so it's it's a beautiful story yeah i wonder have they had any disruptions in their supply chain because of covid it's or because really of challenging. yeah i just talked to the ceo uh they their supply chain's intact they got all their people uh and they're but they're still at, they're still able to do it but it's really it's 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 difficult um it's really difficult but they're still doing it so that's great that's great well tell us about the spices jane and meg do you want to tell us a little bit maybe first about the history of your company how you two met and what the roles, the different roles you two play in this joint yeah. venture? So we met through a friend, you know, when I had the idea for the business, um, I didn't really know what it was going to be. We really started as a mission based business and uh, and I met Jane through a friend and I knew I knew I needed a foodie anchor and we started with the Zenistal cooking food blog and spent a whole year just building a community around cooking and mental health and slowing down and reconnecting and I would do one Zen inspiration every month and then Jane would do recipes and we went to wellness fairs and um, this is in 2012 and then um, using our most successfully um, downloaded recipes went to the farmer's market with three blends our Indian doll the Moroccan tagine which Jane immediately created which is a whole spice infusion uh, and our cocoa van blend and uh, they were little tins and we um, sold out you know we didn't we had little recipes um, we had our you know strict guidelines 20 minute prep um, two different ways to cook it, gone all day. And, you know, we had all these different things and people loved it. And we, we just kind of spent a whole year in the market building more recipes. We put a big bulletin board up, said, what do you want us to cook? You know, and someone would say this recipe, we, Jane would go back and create a blend. We were across from a bison purveyor. She created the Provençal blend. I mean, it's just such a great story. Her daughter became a vegetarian, you know, two years into it. So most of our recipes, half of our recipes are vegetarian. Um, and so then we just kind of kept moving along and then went from the markets to, um, we were in Chicago's Next Best Food product, which led us to doing meal kits, which led us to doing um, Whole Foods, which led to, um, we have won an award for um, best spice in 2017 for Szechuan spice. I was visiting my son in China and brought back Szechuan peppers. And again, Jane's playing around in the kitchen and that became an award-winning blend. So that's really how we've kind of, we built the brand sort of one person at a time. And then in 2014, um, we did start partnering with a social enterprise to provide employment for adults with disabilities. So in addition to teaching classes and, and selling spices and, and that, we also go out into underserved communities um, to teach classes. We've been in the South Side of Chicago. Um, we work with a lot of people teaching them the basics, people with disabilities. We, our first cooking class with a group of young adults with autism. And then we also partnered about the employment piece. Um, they've been running our e-commerce business, Planet Access Company, for six years. So that's kind of where we are. So there's pretty there's a number of arms to this business. There's the e-commerce, which is just to say that is the zen of the cooking.com. Right, right. Want to go shop and get some spices? Yeah. And then retail. And then we also um our B Corp, which is a whole we're also part of the conscious capitalism movement, which is a whole other piece of what we do is try to um we go out and, and teach people how to build a 
a business from the ground up, a consciously created business. And then of course, Jane does all the culinary development. Oh my gosh, this is such a beautiful business. And it's so beautiful how you're using spices, so to speak, to, yeah. to really cultivate business. And I almost feel like well, confidence in people. I, I do want to say one thing, and then I'm, I'm going to let Jane take over. The other thing we started um, in 2017 was a, a spread some Zen concept. We became very concerned about the polarization of people. And we feel like there's nothing that brings people together than the shared meal. So yeah. we started sending out free spices for people to host their own community dinners. Um, and sort of joined as part of that dialogue community, which we continue to do to this day. Um, so if any of your um, uh, viewers would love to host their own community, or we, you know, they'll send you blends, you know, bring your friends together, share some conversations. So that's a, that's a big part of our, our social initiative as well. That's so brilliant. So how do they find out about that? Uh, they just go to our website. We have a spread some Zen. And so people will host little dinners in their home, um, have right. a little and so that's something we we'd love to see that grow okay i'll put a link to that below this but it's spread some zen at zen of slow cooking.com that's brilliant yeah. so brilliant spices for for good of the social good love it so jane how do you make your blends you mentioned for instance meg mentioned that his son came back from china and brought back some Sichuan peppers Absolutely. Well, even before then, we the very first blend that came out of the kitchen was really back to the, my first meeting with my slow cooker because it, it, I arrived mm. with it at home and didn't really know what to do with it. You know, I'm really fortunate, Laura, that like Meg, my mum was a great cook. You know, she still is a great cook. She taught me the basics, you know, how to kind of layer flavors and from scratch. And I only did it by kind of tugging at her her kind of shirt tails in the kitchen. I never, she never really taught me. It was kind of by osmosis, but I was really lucky to have that. And so my approach to cooking was the same. I went off to college and I knew kind of instinctively what to do. Um, and the same for my children. I'm sort of hoping that they're picking this stuff up, you know, along the way. But going back to that initial encounter with my slow cooker, I, I knew what to do with a... Um, Dutch oven. I knew how to use every other appliance, but I didn't know how to use a slow cooker. And so the first thing I ever did was drop some black peppercorns and some um, other whole spices um, into my slow cooker and just kind of turned it on because I thought, well, that's kind of what it's for. It's supposed to cook long and slow and broth is the first thing that I think instinctively I know I'm going to know how to cook. And out mm -hmm. of that came this idea when I was reading about whole spices um, that, you know, they release their essential oils over this long, certain spices release their essential oils over long, slow cooking periods, as long as you don't boil them into sort of submission. And so that really triggered, you know, the innovative piece. So our very first spice blend essentially was, well, I've actually got a few spices to show you. So we took some cinnamon, which is a lovely, you know, beautiful cinnamon stick, you know, some lovely zesty little lemony um, I don't know if you can see the coriander seeds, mm. some cumin, some black pepper, um, and pop them into a tea bag. And so it became an infusion and it just sits in the slow cooker to allow all, all those oils to kind of penetrate and flavor. So that was the first real um, sort of blend that we took to the market. And then it became about what can we do with herbs? How can that, you know, influence our recipes? And so you know, from that very first whole spice infusion, skip three years and Meg brings back these amazing Sichuan peppercorns from the mm. markets in China when she was visiting her son and said, well, you know, oh. what can we do with these? So then it became around thoughts around a hot pot um, and those sorts of flavors. So it became noodle soups, warming, you know, really wholesome. You can use tofu. It doesn't have to be meat based. It really became around approaching a flexitarian way of living, especially as at that time, my daughter had just turned vegetarian at the age of seven. Mm -hmm. So it, in came this whole other kind of bolt from the blue. We, you know, we weren't big meat eaters by any stretch, but I then had to really um, look at the way we ate as a family on a much more holistic level because she needed all the protein she could get at seven. It was kind of a big deal yeah. um, to let her go down that route independently. Mm -hmm. And so I wanted to support her. So the Szechuan blend was a great, a great way into that we could have satisfy the poultry eaters the, the you know beef eaters the vegetarians mm -hmm. with tofu and there were some nice new products starting to come into the market as well 
Um, but essentially all of our blends have really been on the basis of no added nasties. You know, we don't add any fillers. We don't have any anti-caking agents. It's just simply spices with the exception of one that has a little bit of salt and sugar. Um, and salt's great, obviously, for flavoring, but we like to give people a choice um, mm -hmm. to make that selection for themselves. So another of our blends, which is really popular, actually, is what we call our entry level Indian dal blend, which just is so life giving in so many ways because it smells great. It looks great and it tastes amazing with lentils, with chicken, you know, so many different things. And it's full of turmeric, um, which along with the black pepper just really helps enhance, you know, your daily diet. And, and if you're sort of eating that fairly regularly, I think. I think it just makes you feel really good, whether it's warm from the inside or whether it's comforting or whether you just love the flavors. I think it's just great on so many levels. So that's been a really successful blend for us in the curry world, um, which is big where I'm from. Obviously, yeah. in the UK, we have a huge, a, a lot of um, Indian and Pakistani influence. And so being able to explore those tastes um, with a milder blend has been really interesting. So yeah, we. Yeah. yeah, I love so that. Thank you. I have so many questions. I find it so fascinating. One thing that I love about what you both are doing is when I've written recipes, Ayurvedic recipes that we, that are vegetarian, you know, I'll do something for a dal or a kitri, which is basically legumes or lentils and rice. And then there's about 10 or 12 different spices that go into it. So the recipe ingredient list gets very, very long, which I think then looks intimidating to people. You're making it easier for people rather than having to toast the whole seed or spice and then crush it and then saute it in some ghee or some coconut oil, right? You've already got it blended together, which is so beautiful. Absolutely. So and I think can... that's it. The business itself is based around, you know, all of us have different lifestyles. And Meg and I came at this from at similar times, with similar age children, different challenges slightly, but essentially wanting really good flavor, expecting really good taste out of a dinner, but not being time poor. And that's really where we intersect with our, um, our market and, and our customers and our community, because they all want to feel good and eat well. And especially now, um, you know, the last couple of years have been challenging on a number of levels. And not only that, so many people now are at home, working from home and still don't have the time to go into the kitchen necessarily to spend an hour on dinner so it's really about shortcutting that but without losing integrity of any of the ingredients it's so important that we have access to to the good ingredients and to understand how to use them you know um so yeah we're really fortunate to be able to work in this space and just really help people you know it's the art of assembly in some ways but it's also giving people confidence in the kitchen you know we like to sort of say that we want to be your best friend in the kitchen. We're not your mom, we're not your dad, we're not any of those other things. We're your best friend in the kitchen, quietly sort of giving you a little hint every now and again with what to use and how to use it. Um, yeah. Yeah. I just want to say, you know, um, so this is a spice lunch, so you can see it. So, but on the back, going back to what Jane was saying, so we have two different methodologies, the pressure cook methodology mm -hmm. and the slow cook. But if you go down, we have all these other recipes that you could use for this one. So going back to the concept of what you're talking about with your cookbook is that um, we come up with a blend, but then this blend can go in 20 different directions. It mm -hmm. can become, you know, a, a, a coconut um, cauliflower soup. It mm -hmm. can become, you know, a chicken curry. So we really are committed flexitarians. Um, we really, really want to meet people where they are with their dietary preferences and, um, and give them options. But I think for a lot of people, spices are very intimidating. Uh, they aren't for Jane and I, because we grew up in homes where we had lots of, people. but to your point, it's a lot of people and, it, and also very expensive. You know, a lot of times, you know, to buy, you know, an ounce of saffron for one recipe, you know, it's, it's really costly. And our whole approach mm -hmm. is to how to make it more affordable. So I just wanted to throw that out as well. Meg, if you wouldn't mind just showing that a little closer to the camera, I just think it's so cool because I'm not sure that everybody would know. Let me have yeah, you say something. So. And then this is the back of it. So then, and we also list, you know, that like, for example, our doll has, it has really virtually no salt in it. So it doesn't mm -hmm. even register. So it's, it's really nice. Um, but I also wanted to show really quickly, since we had talked about the Sichuan spice, this yeah. is the, the whole spice infusion. 
Um, and then we have a little bit of the story and this is all with the slow cooker, you know, but then if you go to our website, we have pressure cooker and then Jane's also working hard to adapt the recipes for the Dutch oven, you know, because to your point, we had talked before we got started how you were using the Provencal in a different way, because you can you can play around with them in the kitchen. Our hope is that people consider this a pantry staple and then they kind of mix and match um, mm -hmm. the proteins with their liquids with their veggies and and have some fun with it as well right right and just to say that i was surprised when i opened that up how much spice was in there those little pouches they give you quite a lot of spice yeah so it's also very generous i think so, one of the other interesting things about the recipes laura as well is um you know we don't limit ourselves to just flavor a texture is super important and it was really interesting going through my dosha quiz mm -hmm. because it came when I looked at it I was questioning my love for crunchy and sour and all you know wanting to eat put something crunchy on everything and make everything just interesting texturally so all of the recipes we really try and help add that extra dimension as well freshness or texture or just making people feel like they're eating something vibrant as well um which is which is always fun I think in this this world of, of medicine too, you know, eating for, for health, um, mm -hmm. make it interesting on your palate. Mm -hmm. So crunchy, did you say crunchy, salty? Yeah, crunchy and sour and crunchy bitter and actually. So I, yeah, it was really interesting. I was like, oh, it's so interesting to know the things that I know that I crave sometimes. So yeah, mm -hmm. I don't know where that comes from, but I know that I seek certain things at certain times. Yeah. Yeah. So just that. Dosha. Vata dosha. Vata dosha needs sour to boost digestion mm -hmm. and tends to be drawn to crunchy, sometimes crunchy, okay. salty. Yeah. And then bitters are so good for the pitta dosha. Okay, and, um, yeah. I did come out with, two, with the both of them. But yeah. That's why I came out with two. Yeah, that's <laughs> yeah, yeah. And what we see in Ayurveda is, is that there's six tastes and the sweet taste is the majority of what we eat. So that's the meats, the rice, the nuts, the dairies fruits and astringent, which is more like legumes and things that are sort of drying. <clears throat> and then bitter taste. And all three of those tend to run cold. So they will be hard to digest unless you add something that helps with digestion. So we would say if you're cooking sweet, astringent or bitter, which is basically rice, beans and grains, you could say, then what would you add to boost digestion? I would ask you, what would you add, Meg? Um, yeah, I think the Indian actually would be, I mean, when I think about that combination, um, I love, I mean, I, and I, I'm going back, to, I'm just thinking spe about specific recipes. So like, I love our curried lentil tortillas. That's one of my favorite recipes that we have. Um, yeah, that would be the blend I would probably go for. How about you, Jane? I was thinking Southwest Fiesta actually, because oh, yeah, yeah, with the beans, like we're big black, black bean and legume eaters in our house. So, you know, rice bowls with some kind of spicy, spicy legumes on top, and then maybe some tortilla chips. I don't know, something crunchy. Yeah. And the greens, of course, you know, you can have your, your chopped greens on top. Yeah. One of the things that I love is cinnamon and you mentioned cinnamon and I, I love cinnamon as with savory. I feel like that's such a revelation because we're so used to cinnamon with the sweet, right? With our cookies or our cakes. And when you add cinnamon, I find at least when you add cinnamon to a savory, it does something to the brain. The brain suddenly thinks, mm, this is yummy and sweet and delicious. Yeah. It's almost like a umami present. It, it's definitely a different, um, a different feeling. You, you're right. Absolutely. I think um, I cook a lot of North African food at home as well. And even with the blend, which is a Moroccan tagine blend that bring, you know, you tend to add apricots or um, you'll do maybe a chicken and apricot tagine, which will have the cinnamon in there and maybe some olives with the salty edge, you know, um, but it's very warming and very comforting, I think. Um, and so, yeah, it's, it always transforms it. I think it gives it a totally different feeling when you eat it. It's not boring at all. It's very sensorial eating and yeah. smelling, you know, those flavors. Right. So rich and sweet. So tell us about the methods. I was given a tagine when I first got married in my twenties and it sat in the pantry. I think it just collected dust. I didn't know how to use it and I was afraid of it. <laughs> so 
I do love a slow kick cooker and I'm still not sure about a pressure cooker. So could you just tell us about those and how those have helped you and helped the home cook? Yeah, sure. Well, certainly cooking a tagine has been really great because all those spices can, uh, you know, infuse over the long, slow cooking time. So a slow cooker, you can usually choose a setting, uh, cooking it on high or cooking it on low. Um, and you tend to double the amount of time just, just for argument's sake. Um, so a, a chicken dish you could cook in maybe three to four hours if you use thicker meat like the thighs or the legs, um, something that's worked a bit harder that's gonna fall apart in a longer, slower cooking time. Um, you could cook it for maybe seven, eight hours if you want it on the lower setting. So it all depends on the temperature and, and the time of day you, you want to get started with a slow cooker. It's really about lifestyle. Um, so if, you know, I could chop and prep my veg in the morning, pop it in and then leave it all day and then have dinner ready at say six o'clock. Um, but likewise, if you wanted to, you could use a pressure cooker instead. And that's where um, the brand, the Instant Pot, for example, this kind of best selling um, pressure cooker and slow cooker um, and rice cooker all in one has come into favor in so many households. Um, in the, about 20% of households in the States now have one. Um, and what you can do with a pressure cooker is do it all at the back end of the day. So you could have everything ready to go, but that same Moroccan tagine that you did in, you know, in the morning in your slow cooker, you could have it done in 15, 20 minutes in your pressure cooker because it cooks it under pressure. Now it does have a, uh, it does have a, a different effect on the spices. I think it um, enhances the spice flavor slightly more. And I don't know why, because I don't know the science behind that. And I've tried to research it. Um, however, it tastes amazing. And as long as you leave anything meat based to rest for a few minutes, then it will taste good. Um, so that's really the difference between the two. It's about lifestyle. It's about whether or not, um, you know, you want to cook at the beginning or the end of the day, but you can use them to suit all of your needs. And the other thing is, though, too, with the slow cooker, that the aroma is so wonderful like I've been cooking a ton this I've had seven people in and out of my house for the last two weeks so I've been cooking nonstop, and I pulled out my slow cooker and I've been plenty to having a lot of fun with it and I just thought gosh the house smells so good which you don't have when you pressure cook yeah. mm -hmm. right mm -hmm. you know what I mean so there's a like Jane said there's a lifestyle but there's a little bit of a, an emotional sensorial piece to it as well yeah. um, do you feel the same way or I do. And actually, it's really interesting because I all I did was use the pressure cooker for a long time once once that kind of landed in my kitchen and, you know, recipe testing and everything else. And then I went back to my slow cooker and I found the feeling of having chopped and put everything in and put that lid on and know that that's it for the rest of the day. You know, a dal, for example, you could you wouldn't leave it for 12 hours, but you would leave it for four or five mm -hmm. knowing that was done. I felt so good about the rest of my day. I could work without sort of constantly thinking, oh, dinner, oh, dinner, all those little thoughts that poke into your brain sort of halfway through your working day. So I think there's definitely an emotional attachment to, to the slow cooker, but you have to be careful what you put in it, how you use it. It's not a dump and run um, <laughs> mode, modality of cooking really. Cause it, you know, what you put in is what you get out. And so you have to layer your flavors. You start with your sauteed onions and your garlic, for example, and maybe um, some other vegetables. If you're making a, a soup with a mirepoix, then you add um, your herbs and your spices and your seasonings. And then you add maybe, you know, your protein and then you put the broth on top if you're making something like a soup or a stew or a casserole. So there's a methodology to it as well, um, as well as a lifestyle and a timing. But once you get into a habit, it's like anything, it becomes second nature. Mm -hmm. You learn how to stock your pantry with all the essentials, you know, your Zen of Slow Cooking Spice Blends um, or your other spice blends, you know, your, your oils, your um, broths, you know, the vinegars, anything else you want to use with it. Um, so and she always adds, going back to the texture piece, she always adds texture at the end because mm -hmm. that's where a lot of people, this whole cooking methodology falls apart for people, mm -hmm. you know, because they don't have, they don't, they have it and they don't know what to do. They, you know, they need more texture, a topping, a crunch, mm -hmm. um, you know, like she'll, like for in, or like our um, Italian bean soup, um, throw a kale in. You can throw that in the end and just kind of make mm -hmm. it. I just, I wanted to say one other quick thing while we're talking about the appliance. 
The slow cook was actually invented in 1940. It was called the beanery and it was invented so the Jewish housewife could, could observe Sabbath. So it's got a lot of roots in just that, you know, slowing down. Um, it was inspired by um, a, a recipe called Cholin and the would be in the ovens all day that the children would bring it back to the home. And so the inventor was inspired by his grandmother's stories and created here in Chicago. It's called oh the beanery. Gosh. And then it was bought by the beanery and then it was the patent was bought by rival as all these women started entering the workforce in the 70s mm -hmm. and they reinvented it and called it the crock pot because women were still responsible for you know providing the food and also responsible for being out of the home so it was it was you know that's kind of the the evolution of the the technology interesting because it's it, if if it was you know started in 1940 it was a wartime and it's um yeah seems like it started in a time of challenge and, and we are now again in a time of challenge so it's sort of what, what will help us not just get a meal to the table but also help people feel comforted right you're talking about the aromas it's such a comforting aroma to go into a home that smells of something cooking right it's very beautiful yeah. and the nostalgia piece is huge for it yeah. as well isn't it right now so i think yeah. i think it works on so many levels so many levels. When I think about spices and things, and I think about some of the things you've mentioned, south of France, Spain, Italy, if you walk through, you know, a, a smaller town at midday, right, wafting out of the windows onto the streets are those beautiful smells of whatever they're making for lunch. And you can just smell lunch being cooked through yeah. a city, <clears throat> which I just absolutely love. <laughs> I had a home there for a long time, Laura, and we would go to our local town at lunchtime and <clears throat> we would hear the bell it was like a klaxon would go at midday and everybody down tools this is only 15 years ago everyone would down tools and everybody would head to the local cafe and all the tables were full and you had a three-course lunch every day for, and exactly that the aromas would waft through nobody nobody was working everyone was eating <laughs> it's so beautiful and psychological studies show that that contact means we, re we release any kind of um, sense of separation, any sense of animosity, right? That's what we all need is to come together around a three course meal or any sort of a meal, a home cooked meal. Mm, that's beautiful. I love what you're doing. I love how this is so much more than a spice company, right? It's like I, I'm, I'm visualizing spice, like the, the black pepper corn or the cardamom, this, the round little spice in the middle of a wheel and you have so many spokes. But all yeah. these folks like bring us back into the wheel and into the hole. Thank you for what you're doing. Is there anything else you'd like to share? A favorite spice, a favorite recipe, something that you feel people should know about what you are up to? I, I always go back, a favorite recipe, I always go back to my first Indian dal recipe, which we created on Halloween. Mm -hmm. When my kids were little and you needed something, when you came through the door, that rush of candy, you know, you needed to have something you could eat quickly and mm. so that's when it was born it was out of that necessity for something filling substantial relatively healthy so it's literally just red lentils indian dal like a curry blend mm. coconut milk broth tomato paste and a bit of onion and it's so good and you can eat it on rice you can eat it in a wrap it's so versatile so i think that would be one of my favorites and having traveled around india and i know meg has too it just takes me somewhere else it transports me um mm -hmm. so that's probably yeah. probably my favorite yeah that's meg. Thing about, i love that that's another thing about spices is that it connects us to different lands and different cultures and people around the world that's beautiful yeah, and that's a big part of why we're globally inspired, because we really wanted people to see themselves wherever they were at the table. We didn't want the brand to just be um, based on one geography. And we have dreams of creating more and more flavors. You know, that's the fun part of doing this, you know, um, but that's why we're, we have blends from all over the world. My, you know, it's funny, Jane, I was thinking about going back to my favorite. I've made the Italian bean soup now, like it's, it's on a rotation for the whole week. I've had so many people in and out. Um, so it's like, it's been great, but I love, I also, my other rotation for the last two weeks has been the squash and black bean chili, which you've got to try that one more. It's being a vegetarian, it's so good. It's so good. Yeah, we'll see how you like that next time we chat. <laughs> my, my You're playing with the blends right now, right? My sister gave me, I am, and my sister gave me a box of Rancho Gordo beans. Oh, wow. And I've, 
I've, so right now I've got white bean soaking. There are Lubia Blancas from Mexico, but there is a bag of, of black beans in there. So first I'll start with your Tuscan, Tuscan white bean soup. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. And we work with Rancho Gordo. That's so funny. About three oh, years ago, we company. created a blend and bean connection. So we've got, we'll pull up some of our old recipe cards um, so that we can send them to you and see what you have. So we've been playing perfect. with them as well. I'll yeah. put those links in down below as well. That's perfect. So I look forward to it. I'll let you know how lunch goes. <laughs> <laughs> Good. Wonderful. Well, you two are doing amazing, amazing work. So again, zenofsilcooking.com, go check out their spices. I think that getting your spices, it sounds like not only do we get the warmth and the deliciousness of that flavor, the recipes that make cooking more joy joyful and easy, but it sounds like we're also helping you help others. So it's just a really good interchange, right? It's, it's beautiful. Thank you for what you do. Well, and thank you. I, I bought your cookbook, so I, I'm having fun playing with it. Lucy and I, my daughter is at home right now, so we're having fun for all the recipes. So this is going to be an adventure for us as well. Great. And I think it'd be fun to hear how you might add your own blends to some of those recipes. So do let me yeah. know. Yeah. Yeah. Well, yeah, that sounds like it's a great idea. One day, let's do a retreat. We can meet somewhere in one of these small ancient towns. <laughs> we should do a cooking <laughs> trip. <laughs> or a spice trip. That would be really fun. Fantastic. <laughs> Yeah, so let's look forward to more. Thank you so much, you two. It's been Thank really you. a pleasure and a joy to talk to you. I love what you're Thank doing. You. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you.